In this month's Environmental Awakening, show number eight in the series, we have a special presentation for you. A video journal of a 54 mile march to shut down a nuclear reactor. Whether you live in California, Texas, Indiana, Vermont, or Plymouth, Massachusetts, where this story starts out, we all have the need to know, to know important information that will affect our lives and the lives of the people in our communities. Now this isn't a typical story you'll see on mainstream television, but we at E-Awakening believe that these are the types of stories that need to be told. Let's join the most dedicated group of individuals that I have had the pleasure to march with. The consequences of an incident at this place are just really frightening. And it's about time we did something about it. So uh, keep walking, keep marching, keep advocating. It's a really dangerous uh, mechanical facility, radioactive, radiological facility that threatens not only my son and my family, but, but every single person on Cape Cod, the islands, uh, southeastern Massachusetts, northeast, it depends which way the wind blows. Just uh, human damage that has been caused since 2011 by the Fukushima reactors. Same thing could happen here. The, 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 the eastern third of uh, Massachusetts could be uninhabitable for centuries. o'clock because we have to be in Plymouth by 12. We've planned this march along with Occupy Hingham to raise awareness by marching from Plymouth to the State House through all those communities north of us that would be affected by a radioactive plume. Pilgrim is an imminent threat right now. The cancer rates around Pilgrim are four times higher for leukemia the closer you live or work to Pilgrim. It's the same failed General Electric Mark I design as at Fukushima. A small group of active citizens with the average age of between 50 and 70 plus years walked past signs warning that this was a secure area. They crossed the street so that they would not be on Entergy property. Just mere hundreds of feet beyond this public road is the Pilgrim Reactor. Some of the marchers waved goodbye as two security guards warned a march support vehicle to keep on moving. But to me, this nuclear reactor looked extremely vulnerable. Union of Concerned Scientists had said it would take 15 minutes for a, a band of well-armed terrorists to do serious damage at that reactor. And here were two people on the property for more than 20 minutes undetected, and we actually walked off undetected. For those of you who are concerned about the vulnerability of that plant, I will remind you there isn't a no-fly zone over that plant. There is no restriction relative to flying around it, and that is very problematic. We shall not be moved just like a tree. Putting one foot in front of the other, marchers made their way along roads with an ocean view and a welcome cooling breeze. Because nobody knows where you're going to go when the new melts down. Come on and tell me where you're going to go. In Plymouth, it was picture postcard perfect with the Mayflower and Plymouth Rock. Sign her so we're up. doing this for the children because they Sign are the most susceptible up. to sure. the damaging effects of radiation. Okay. Sure. Sure. But postcards of a different kind were being passed out, showing the 50-mile radius around the reactor, which included Martha's Vineyard to the south, Providence to the west, and Gloucester to the north. Pilgrim is a clear and pl present danger. Cape Cod has understood this when Kurt Schwartz, the director of MEMA, came to the Cape and told us that we would not be evacuated in the event of an accident at Pilgrim. We would, be, we would stay put, we would be contaminated, and then we would be relocated. Relocated. That was the state plan for people on Cape Cod. Now, we're 35, I live in Harwich, it's 35 miles as a crow flies, and if the wind is blowing the other way, it's Boston that's going to take the hit this very, very special part of the Commonwealth. Essentially, if there's an incident, being totally cut off, and I don't know whether 
what was it Diane said, evacuated or relocated. I think resettled is probably the word for refugees. Constantly creating waste, and I think, you know, that to me is the most irresponsible part of it is the waste. Right. Spreading the message in what organizers are calling the contamination relocation zone. Hello. We're walking. All of the marchers are well educated and have studied and researched this issue. But what drives these community leaders to push themselves and their bodies, enduring the pain and sacrifice that I am experiencing with them firsthand? I think it's just, just taking steps. It, it, it feels good. It feels good even to take literal steps to connect with the earth and to support the earth. And and, the, and all of us who live on the earth. So I see this as a coming together of, uh, of true leadership. I, you know, as, as countercultural as these people are, or I am, I, I see this a change. Yeah. I do believe our culture is changing from grassroots up. There's a revolution going on where, where these small groups, and it's small groups that uh, are important, I believe. And when we kind of connect with all the other groups. There's a lot of power there. There's a lot of power. Congratulations. Congratulations. You guys did awesome. Connections are being made and human power is surging as this hearty team of marchers crosses the finish line for the first day at the Beale House in Kingston. It's time for a little rest and a great meal. Tomorrow is a long day, but it's also kind of a dangerous day. It's, we'll run out of sidewalk in about a mile and a half. All right? Mm -hmm. So we can't be like going for the shade. <laughs> <laughs> really, I, I want to be, you know, I, um, we got to stay in between the, the support vehicles so people yeah. see us. Gonna honor our daughters and sons down by the Bay State Bay. Down by the Bay State So we need to work together. Unacceptable. We are not collateral damage to the corporate profit of Entergy Corporation. We live in a democracy and the people have been speaking. I feel like I'm in a really horrible science fiction movie. Only it's true. In Fukushima, the kids can't go outside and play. The radiation is so horrible. I have a colleague in France who helps collect money that I gave to last year for the kids from Japan near Fukushima to go and play in France for a couple of weeks in the summer so that they can be outside in the air. They should close the plant immediately. It is a bomb waiting to go off. It's totally vulnerable to terrorists. The spent fuel rod pool is 10 stories above the ground under a corrugated roof. I'm walking for our future, including my daughter, you so walk? they don't have to do this, so that they have a future, and it doesn't include this. Mostly the legacy of the nuclear waste, shutting down the plants, anything to call attention to the danger of nuclear power. Day two is on busy roads with a narrow shoulder. From my perspective, media coverage has been sparse. Some local papers covered the event. The local chain was represented by a really hardworking photographer. And an area radio reporter did a little backpedaling to get a story. What is the uh, what is the hike what is the walk been like the past two days? It's been great. Boy, connecting with a lot of good people, we're getting a lot of honks, a lot of positive support. And a cable producer did a handheld interview. It was time for lunch, and the marchers were getting some rest to complete this very long day. We're in a situation where, you know, quote, society is organized, and it's not organized in the best interest of the, the people or the environment, and it's going to take some uh, generations to really reorganize um, our communities in ways that are rational, logical, and humane and ecological. On backcountry roads, efforts are made to get critical information out. Oh, would you like more information on what we're doing? I can't, we got nowhere to put it. <laughs> Conversation, ideas, and inspiration is shared by all the marchers. 
The pace picks up as the 16 mile day turns serious. Roads are very narrow with little or no shoulder. It's over the North River by a salt marsh. Time for a quick break. <laughs> Elaine and Arthur Dickinson, both retired teachers, enjoy the quiet beauty of their backyard. They live on Cape Cod in what they and the Cape Downwinders call the contamination relocation zone. This picture documents how Elaine spent Mother's Day getting arrested for a second time, crossing the line onto Entergy property. Here she tells us about her first arrest. I went over to my husband and my brother who was there that day and I just said, you know, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to get arrested today. I'm going to stay there. Elaine is not the first to spend time in jail and in court. Involved in bringing attention to what she describes as unacceptable risks by the government and private corporations, in this case, the Pilgrim Nuclear Reactor. The gates were wide open. I mean, it's like wide open. There's nobody to stop anybody. Expanding on one issue that confronts those who live and work and vacation in this area, as an active senior, like many who have stepped over the line, Elaine targets the wider issue. There's dirty little secrets all over this country and probably all over this world that need our attention that need to be cleaned up and cleaned up properly because we are really dirtying our nest and what are we leaving our children and our grandchildren and future generations. And as one answer for the grassroots activism that is spreading throughout the world, informed, active, conscious individuals are what Elaine sees as a way to win the objective. If we could get more and more people involved in what we're doing, Maybe we could get them to close it down. Back on the march, this small but committed group of individuals is bringing the message beyond the Cape. It is the end of day two, where we are shuttled to our overnight accommodations for the next two days. Families' bedrooms are on the second floor. Father Andrew, who has marched with us, shows us the hospitality that this Benedictine monastery is known for. It's a beautiful, peaceful place. Prayers are said, dinner is enjoyed, and each of us to our room in this retreat house for a shower and a comfortable bed. We are shuttled back to where we ended the march. The predicted rain does not dampen spirits. My feet get wet, but I am liberated of the heavy camera gear, carrying only my GoPro and an umbrella. Conditions make rush hour traffic more ominous, but somehow the gloomy day seems to harmonize with the message. When they put the plants in, like Fukushima, they cut the hillside down 30 feet in order to make the water pump work that would pump water in to cool the facility. And so our big problem with Pilgrim is not the hurricanes that come up from the south, but the nor'easters that blow from the east. We're talking the Atlantic Ocean here. We're talking, get some respect here. Get some respect for the power of nature. We need to act like our lives depend on it. Because as Mary Lampert says, let's hope we shut it down and not mama nature. Thank you. Almost. Green light, right? Yellow. Elaine? I understand the technical challenge of maintaining an aging piece of infrastructure. And we're not talking about a bridge in this case. We're talking about a nuclear power plant that was designed with a 40-year life that has now been operating there for 43 years, licensed now to 60 years. It is inexcusable. We're working there, Dan. 
A serious atmosphere consumed the march as puddles made the challenge even more difficult. March leader John Golly kept the pace moving, but also shouted out words of encouragement. You're good. You've got about 40 minutes. As our focus was on the road ahead and our next break, the Cohasset police pulled over one of the support vehicles, but the drivers were prepared with a list of police chiefs that were contacted beforehand. How you doing? I'm doing a documentary on this. Okay. Seen here, March support driver Bob Miles has studied the nuclear subject extensively. He has traveled the U.S. and the world. He is a veteran with a master's degree in English and has taught high school English for 32 years. Here he lightens our mood, but his study and research into nuclear power quickly brings us to a very dark place. There's so many spent fuel rods stored in a containment vessel that was built above the reactor so that if something happens to the reactor and it melts down and catches on fire, 3,300 spent fuel rods would fall into the reactor and make the radioactivity about 400 times worse than Chernobyl. I can warn you not to look up Chernobyl birth defects on the internet. Pictures far too horrible to use in this video. Pictures I wish I had never seen. But as marchers slog on through the off and on again rain, there is a feeling of hope that disasters like Chernobyl and Fukushima will never happen again. Marchers from Vermont bring us news that it is possible to beat Goliath and all his money. We were through many, many different angles and many different campaigns. We were able to shut Vermont Yankee and it closed, it made its last toxic waste on December 29th, 2014. And I think people in Vermont, a lot of people saw the shutting of Vermont Yankee as an issue of just corporate power that we were that Vermont Entergy really thought that they could they could beat the state of Vermont and that they could outgame the state of Vermont. How are you guys feeling? A wet and soggy day is finally over and it's time for some great food, some great people and for some great music. As the gathering of supporters and marchers clapped rocked to the rhythm and appreciated Stephen and the Snake, former band members of Orpheus, guys who know what it's like to fight for a cause. Well, no matter who your mentors are, it's pretty plain to see that you've been to jail to justice and you're in good company. So, we're gonna walk quick, right? The last day of the march and the most dangerous. It's rush hour traffic, city streets, and in some cases the walkers beating cars that are participating in this daily gridlock. The pace is set for three miles an hour to make it to the noon rally at Dewey Square by South Station. Resolve has not dwindled, as the numbers have. Those left know why they are doing this march. There's no sidewalk. We got to get over that quick. They're coming off an arm ramp and they're going to work. So we got to really watch each other's back. Cross the road. There's a lot of different people here, and we're all working together for some change. You know, whether it's the closed pilgrim or change the regular wider culture. You know, to a more compassionate, to a more nonviolent culture, to a more sustainable culture, to a more inclusive culture that everyone matters and everyone has an equal voice. Um, and to live out of that place, uh, it is possible. Watch it. Back, 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 back. All right. Good. Good. Together, uh, I feel like that's really what so much about 
activism is, is just connecting with people and then becoming more and more of a movement and less splintered. What I'm seeing from this march, as I said, was just, just taking a walk and connecting with people and even um, connecting with people on the streets one-on-one -on -one is, is a very powerful thing. It's the final leg of the journey across South Boston onto Summer Street. Turning the corner, we see the skyline. The end of a long march is in sight. But it seems just the beginning of a battle between those who are willing to take a chance and those who see nuclear power as the possible end of life as we know it. See, nuclear radiation is, uh, uh, I call it an equal opportunity killer. It kills everybody. It kills humans, it kills birds, it kills grass, it kills trees, it kills everybody. And so to include the entire earth in a, in a walk like this, it just, it really felt right. We do not have the right to saddle all of the future beings on Earth with the most toxic waste ever created. Nuclear waste is radioactive 10,000 years from today. It will still be radioactive. It will still need to be isolated from life not in order to not cause harm. Marchers are now spread apart in small groups. But looking through my camera lens at the workers and people rushing about, I suddenly imagine those in neon shirts as the cells of one body we call Earth. Part of the lymphatic system, immune cells spreading out and healing the planet. Well, here it is, the day of reckoning. 54 miles and four days culminating in the final leg through the streets of Boston to the State House. Inside, the walkers are recognized and cheered for. More than a dozen individuals and organizations speak out against the Pilgrim nuclear reactor. But mainstream TV is missing, the press at large absent. Communications here, from my point of view, a virtual blackout. My hope is that within a relatively short period of time, we can, can finally close this thing down, develop other sources of energy that are better, more benign, needless to say, far less dangerous, and do so in a way that's gonna make this a better planet and a better place. What the walkers did is took one step at a time to start healing this wounded earth. But together, we're going to close Pilgrim. We're going to walk together and stand up and shout and say, shut Pilgrim down. We're marching for the children so that they can have a better world. We're marching for ourselves so that we can find some rest. Put one foot in front of the other. Keep on moving forward. Even though the pain is intense. We're marching for the birds and all the animals. We're marching for the insects, the plants and all the rest. Yes, we're marching, we're marching for life itself, for the planet Earth. Home of our bird. And we're marching for each other. We're marching, marching, we're marching, and we won't stop till we find our way. 
till we save the day. We're marching, marching, we're marching, and we won't stop till we find our way, till we save the day. When I first started the march, I wasn't quite sure why I didn't like nuclear power. But after four days, I'm crystal clear on the issue. And this video is my way to get the story out. Let's grow the network. Let's spread the word. Let's live with the earth instead of against it. I'm Dan Broman, and this is Environmental Awakening. We are in a climate emergency. This is a state of emergency and our survival and the survival of this ecosystem is on the line. These trees, so full of life, at an age where they're really starting to soak up the CO2. The fastest, easiest, simplest way to fight climate change is to leave forests intact. These trees being sold off by the state for the private profit of a contractor who will soon be dragging lifeless wood down a skid road. The easiest thing to do is protect existing forests, mature trees, when they're just starting to pack on the carbon. But there is a group of private citizens ready to be civilly disobedient in an effort to save their forest. You can reach the Wendell State Forest Alliance at restore.org backslash save Wendell State Forest and at facebook.com backslash groups backslash Wendell State Forest Alliance. <laughs> 